that walk on. How effective is the Bastrika Pranayam or the bellows breath as an adjunctive tool to meditation when we practice stillness later on? It is very powerful. It is effective. However, there are dangers involved as well. So the Bastrika Pranayam, yeah, well for me, yeah, would have to be learned directly from your teacher. Uh, because there are many preparatory requirements leading to its practice. First, you need to uh, strengthen the physical body and develop its energetic side, meaning the bandhas. Number two, you need to practice some preparatory pranayama as well, the lesser advanced forms. Thus, you strengthen your respiratory system. All right. And then even the Bastrika pranayama itself, there are many stages of its practice leading to its full uh, technique. Right. So seek guidance, but if you are already practicing your Bastrika Pranayam, this lecture may help you refine your technique more yeah, and then use that as your preparatory practice for meditation. I use this personally and yes, it is so effective. There is a high probability that after the practice, you will experience Samadhi. Okay. One of the concepts behind Bastrika Pranayam is that we allow a larger amount of prana which comes from the oxygen that we inhale to enter our system. Right. Thus, you need to develop your nadis and the bandhas first because the nadis will absorb that extra amount of prana. If the nadis are blocked and then you inspire too much breath, it could lead to hyperventilation. Worse, it could cause your inner organs to collapse. All right. If the bandhas are not strong enough to channel the energy where you need it most, yeah, there's a probability that you might send yeah, this high electrical uh, current to suddenly enter the nervous system, the brain, which is not good for the health of your neurons. It could lead to short circuits. Now, as a preparatory uh, requirement to meditation, yeah, our goal for doing the Bastrika Pranayam is to cool down the Agni. Yeah, so the uh, process of inspiring the oxygen because the prana, you know, the universal life force, has a cooling, soothing, and dry nature. And our Agni, which comes from the inside of the body, where the Kundalini energy is wet, yeah, it's hot, it's moist, it's dense. Yeah, so when the prana, the universal force, uh, we inspire through the Bastrika Pranayam, you know, will blend with our own Agni. As the Agni cools down, the electrical um, uh, current, which is within the Agni, will surface up. All right. And then it will manifest like electrical sensations, electrical vibrations, impulses, impulses covering the surface of your body. Yeah, that is actually the Kundalini energy already in its widespread restless form. All right. So you might say that when you are successful blending the right amount of prana with the Agni, and then you're able now to feel the electrical pulsations as a byproduct of these two forces together, you are already filtering the kundalini energy out of the agni because as i've mentioned a while back the kundalini energy is within the agni and then when you blend the cooling life force with the agni the kundalini energy surfaces up yeah, so it moves away it detaches from the dense agni All right. now how much then of the prana is needed for this uh, ideal you know, reaction to occur. Right. So not too much. Yeah. So as an adjunctive tool to meditation, the Bastrika Pranayam should be you know, performed or practiced subtly, not as dynamic as when, for example, you're using it as a preparation for um, 
energy producing practice. For example, later on after the Bastrika, you will be doing your um, asana practice, something like that. But as an adjunctive tool to meditation, it has to be done subtly. So you do not overload the system with the prana. All right. Just enough life force to cool your agni down to the level that it will result to that you know, electrical byproduct of your kundalini energy um, resurfacing higher up the fronts of the body because the kundalini energy really when it manifests it it goes up to the surface like it will cover your skin like it will cover just the the frontal part of your body although later on as you refine the sensation you will feel it really deep inside but as its initial manifestation it goes up to the surface of the body because you will use that now uh, awareness and manifestation yeah to um, collect the unified force this uh, electrical pulsation yeah to just be confined through the central channel using the bandas definitely to make room for her to rise through the astral system of the spine yeah all the way to the inner brain all right. Now, um, so how do we now make use of the Bastrika Pranayam, the technique itself, when it comes to um, its meditative um, requirement? All right. So instead of like inspiring the big chunk of air, so you want to filter you know, the air that you are doing it slowly. It's not as deep as Ujjayi. All right, so I have to be very clear about this because Ujjayi, you're breathing through the backs of the throat. Yeah, so when you breathe through the backs of the throat, that's, you are um, warming the air already. That it is not as effective as uh, the Bastrika when it comes to cooling the Agni. All right, so the Bastrika breath, yeah, so that you can maintain its cool sensation, it has to be done subtly and instead of allowing the air to pass through the backs of the throat, you allow the air to pass through the surface of the body. Really, you can feel the air brush through the walls of the nostrils and don't bring it to the backs of the throat, rather keep it to the surface. Keep it on the surface of the body as you make its way down. All right, that's number one. Number two, you do not want yeah, the sensation of the uh, the breath to go all the way down to the hips. Right? Somehow your bandhas anticipate already that the prana is descending. Right? So as you inspire to the surface of the body, yeah, so you use now your bandhas to rise your agni up. So like you are breathing in two direction, one is descending and one is rising. All right. So the Bastrika Pranayam is dynamic practice. You really inflate you know, your system. You, know, you send the breath all the way down to the hips that you feel the whole body is inflated. Whereas as an, an adjunctive tool to meditation, it has to be done subtly only. Not as deep as Ujjayi, but not as light as your natural breath. So you retain that awareness of the technique of Bastrika, however you make it more gentle. You can just allow the air to pass through the fronts, a little below the Anahata Chakra, yeah, but not too deep to the hips. And then together with the drawing inwards of your prana, you rise your own energy up. So the bandhas lift the Agni yeah, as you inspire the prana to enter the body and then you will feel it right away electrical pulsations really like tingling sensation it will cover up first your skin your arms and then you will go through the stage of yoga nidra yeah and, and just carry on with the practice until such time that you are able now to isolate yeah, the electrical pulsation itself and then process it with your bandhas and the rest of the system is the same leading to uh, absorption. Yeah, lie down still, listen to the Anahata Nada and then just make use of your bandhas to subtly direct 
your kundalini energy higher up the spine you can either rest the energy in the chest where it's more healing or you can further the rising up to the sahasrara chakra the head the inner brain where the soma is there and, and then it will result to another blending inside the head thus the absorption is attained